If you're glad to be in the service one more time, praise the Lord, everybody. You streaming with us. If you're glad to be in the service one more time, praise the Lord, everybody. I come to tell you that God is worthy to be praised. God is worthy of our hand clapping. God is worthy of our foot stomping. And yeah, God is worthy to be praised. He's worthy of us raising our hands and saying, I'm glad, so very glad to be in the service of the Lord one more time. If you will join us in with us, we're gonna sing that one more time. Raise your voices high and let God know that you're glad to be in the service one more time. and 13 and it says that I have fainted lest I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living and then God reminded me that he also promised it may not look good but it's going to work for our good I don't know about you but I talked to someone this week and they said I've had a hard week I'm going to tell you today it may not look good but it's definitely gonna work for your good. I don't know about you, but somebody went to the doctor on this week and it didn't look good, but I guarantee you it's gonna work for your good. Something happened on this week to you. Maybe it hasn't been looking good for a very long time, but let me encourage you that it is going to work for your good. And I bless God for that, I bless God for that. Our scripture reading on this morning comes from Psalms 8. It says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy hands, the moon, and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that, my, that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visited him, for thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands, that thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep, and oxen, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passes through the pass of the seas. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent 
is thy name in all the earth. And the word of the Lord is blessed. He's an everlasting father. He's the prince of peace, lily in the valley, bright and morning star. He's our sustainer, our keeper, our healer. And we love him this morning. And we just come for no other reason but to uplift and magnify the name of Jesus. We magnify your name, Jesus. We lift your name high, Jesus. High in all the earth, God. High above COVID-19, God. High above racism, God. High above society. Systemic prejudice, God. We love you, God. And we thank you because despite our works, God, you continuously bless us. You continue to keep us even when we don't deserve to be kept. And we love you this morning. I worship you, you are here, you're working in this place, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, you are here, you're moving in our midst, I worship you. You're working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. We call you Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper, Light in the Darkness, my God. That is who you are. Waymaker. You're mending every heart. 
Even when I don't see it, your work. Even when I don't feel it, your work. And you never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, your work. Even when I don't feel it, your work. And you never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, your work. Even when I don't feel it, your work. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop. Even when you never stop,
Worship him for who he is. Once we get that down pat, we'll be perfect at praising him for what he does. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We got to worship him for who he is. The song says he is a way maker. If that's you and you've needed a way to be made, worship him. Song says he's a promise keeper. If he's ever kept a promise for you, worship him. The song says he's a protector. If he's ever protected you from anything, worship him. The song says he's a healer. If you've ever been sick or you're sick right now in your body, worship him. He's a sustainer. If you've ever lost your footing or it hasn't been on solid ground, you worship him. Worship him, we can praise him for what he does because the song says he never stops. Never stops. Because that is who he is. As we prepare our minds and our hearts and our spirits for prayer, I'm going to ask that you get a thank you on your lips. That is who you are. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent 
is thy name in all the earth. Oh God, we come to you first saying thank you. For we realize if we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't thank you enough. Thank you, God, for life, health, and strength on today, God. Thank you, God, that you saw fit to wake us up this morning. Allow us to get up and have the activities of our limbs. For we realize, God, that somebody wishes they could trade places with us. So, God, we say thank you that you allowed us to open up our mouths and give you praise on this morning. Thank you, God, that we're able to wave our hands and give you praise on this morning. Thank you, God, that we're able to move our feet in praise to you. For your word declares, let everything that have breath praise your holy name. It goes on to tell us why, because you're worthy and you're good to us and your mercy endures forever. So God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy, God. We know without those two things, we just could not function in this life. Thank you for your grace and mercy. Thank you, God, that you haven't allowed the things of this world to overtake us and to consume us. But it is because of your grace and mercy that we are not consumed. And God, we tell you thank you. God, we tell you thank you that this week may have been a little rough, but at the end of the week was some light called Sunday, and we're so grateful that you allowed us to get to Sunday. Even in our homes, God, you allowed us to get to Sunday. So God, we open up our hearts, and we open up our minds, and we open up our spirits to you, oh God. God, we want you to make us, and to mold us, and to shape us, and to have your way, oh God. So we say, God, enter in right now. Have your way in this place called Tristone. Have your way in the homes of those that are streaming, oh God. Enter into the homes right now. Shake things up. Move them around, oh God. Let them know that they've been in the presence of the King. And God, we ask that the man that will stand behind this sacred desk, that you would bless him even now. Remove any doubts, any fears, any confusion, anything that may not be of you. Remove it in the name of Jesus, oh God. Let his eyes only see you in the name of Jesus. Let his mouth only speak the words that you give in the name of Jesus. Endow him, oh God, with your anointing right now in the name of Jesus. And God, let our hearts and our minds be receptive to your word, oh God. Because if we ever needed a word from the Lord, God, we sure do need one now. So God, we just thank you. And God, I thank you for Jesus. I thank you, God, that we have a name that is above every name in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you, God, that when I call on the name of Jesus, that, dimble, that demons tremble and they flee, God. I thank you that when I call on the name of Jesus, sickness has got to go. When we call on the name Jesus, everything that is wrong has to be right, God. In the name of Jesus, God, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, God, that you are Lord, God. God, we plead the blood of Jesus over our families, God. We plead the blood of Jesus over our children, Oh God, we plead the blood of Jesus over our spouses, God. We plead the blood of Jesus over our pastors and leaders, oh God. We plead the blood of Jesus over our churches, oh God. God, your name is unmatched. Jesus, there's nobody like you. You have no rival, Jesus. You have no equal, Jesus. It's only Jesus. God, I thank you, God. God, I thank you, God. Jesus, I thank you for dying, God. I thank you that you silenced the guilt and the shame of sin. That you silenced the boasting of death, God. That it has no sting because you conquered the grave, oh God. Thank you, God, for your name. Thank you that we have the privilege of calling your name. 
thank you that when we want to, we can say the name Jesus. When we need to, we can call on the name Jesus. I thank you for your son, Jesus. And I thank you for his sacrifice. God, we want you to have your way in this place. We no longer want church as usual, oh God. We want you to have your way. We want to be on your agenda, God. We want you to move how you want to move, oh God. We want you to say what you want to say, oh God, through us. And God, we will forever be in your debt. We will forever give your name all glory, all honor, and all praise. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
do me a favor. If he's ever done anything for you, this is a good time to give him a good praise. You didn't make that personal. I said, if you know he's ever done anything for you, this is a good time to give him some praise. Okay, L let me try it this way. If you can think back over your life and know that if it had not been for him and him alone, you wouldn't be where you are today. You wouldn't have what you have today. You wouldn't have breath in your body. You wouldn't have a roof over your head. You wouldn't be in your right mind. Somebody ought to give God praise. If you fit anywhere in one of those categories, you ought to be able to open up your mouth and testify that if it had not been for the Lord being on my side, tell somebody, Jesus will. He will. He will. I'm a living witness. He will. I can testify that he will. I can declare that he will. Somebody throw your head back and tell me, yes, he did. Come on, throw your head back and shout, yes, he did. McDougal, how you gonna make it? Jesus will. Executive pastor, how you gonna make it? Jesus will. Dr. Ross, how you gonna make it? Jesus will. Sister Loretta, how you gonna make it? Jesus will. Lady Tammy, how you gonna make it? Jesus will. Sometimes you don't have to have a reason. All you need is his name. I said all you need is his name. I said all you need is his name. Call him. He'll answer. Call him. He'll show up. Call him. I'm, I'm, I'm here to introduce the preacher. I'm here to introduce the preacher. But I think preaching will be a little bit easier if I introduce you to who Jesus is. Mary's baby. Born in a manger. Lived for 30 years before he started his preaching ministry. For three years, he provided signs miracles and wonders but then the day came that he came to fulfill his father's will he went to a cross on calvary he dared the death that i deserve oh come on somebody you know i got to tell the baptist story but on the third day morning i said on the third day morning he got up with all power in his hands. Somebody just do me a favor, just slip your hands up and say, thank you, Jesus. Come on, just slip your hands up and just say, thank you, Jesus. We gotta move, we gotta move. We gotta move, but I don't know what he did for you. I don't know where he brought you from. I don't know if he's healed your body. I don't know if he saved your life. So I can't give God a thank you on your behalf because I want to give you a moment to tell God thank you for yourself. So if you would for the next 15 seconds, if you want to scream, go ahead and scream. If you got to dance, go ahead and dance. If you got to wave, go ahead and wave. If all you got is a cry, then go ahead and cry. But take a minute and tell God, thank you. Jesus! 
to rejoice and be glad in it. Can somebody give God praise one more time? It is preaching time. It is preaching time, and I am excited. I'm looking forward to receiving what the Lord would have for us on today. And we have one that is with us. There's no stranger to tried stone. We're grateful for our brother and God's man, for this appointed time in the person of Pastor Kendall Washington. And we thank God for him being here with us. And I pray that you will sit in prayer for him and with him as he comes to mount the sacred pulpit to declare God's word. I am grateful for him, not only as a brother, but I thank him for just being a friend and having someone I can talk to and be open with and he's been able to pour into my life. And I am certainly grateful to have him here to pour into your life. If you would, those of you that are in the sanctuary, just point your hands toward him. Those that are with us virtually, just point your hands towards the screen. And just begin to ask God to show himself mighty during this preaching moment. God, we ask even now that you would touch Pastor Washington, give him all that he stands in need of to fulfill his assignment on today. Allow preaching to be easy. Allow your anointing to fall fresh in this place. We're grateful and we say thank you in advance for the word that will be shared, that will provide direction, clarity, and empower during these strange and evil days. God say, we say thank you. We say we love you. Have your way in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I said, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Our God is great, and he is greatly to be praised. Listen, I know we can't touch, but look over at somebody and say, neighbor, you're looking at somebody that's a miracle, that's a survivor, and somebody that the devil said wasn't going to make it. Tell him, but look at me now, still moving, still breathing, still praising. If you got a reason to give God praise, come on, do it right now. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Bless you today. Bless you today. We honor the life. We honor the life of and the legacy of Bishop Jerome Ross. Come on, somebody. Thank God for him. Come on. He's a living legend. Thank God for him. But we also thank God for... Pastor Dale Tucker, who is here. Come on, somebody. Come on. I love on your pastor. Come on. You can do better. Everybody in TV land, in Facebook land, wherever you're looking at us, we love God for him. I love him because he's a, such a brother. He's proven to be a friend and a brother. And we're grateful for the, uh, for the position that God has placed him in, the set man of this house. And somebody said he has some big shoes to fill. No, he's got his own shoes. Amen. Amen. I thank God for him and his, his anointing and his ability to worship and to serve. And thank God for you all, my brothers and my sisters that are here on today. Now, uh, do me a favor uh, on this mic. If you could take all the mids out, my, my voice hates mids, and give me some highs, and then give me some volume and blow my hair back, we'll be in good shape. <clears throat> so I won't have to work as hard today. Thank God, th thank God for this music ministry. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Thank God, thank God. Yes, yes, and we're, we're grateful. Um, Try C sharp. Um. Lord, you are good. Thank you. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. Better than good. Can't thank you enough. I owe you my life Can't praise you enough Even if I tried Cause you've been So good You've been So good Lord, you've been so good to me. All right, that's enough. I just, I heard that little line. You know that song, uh, no, no, don't start playing it. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. I, saw, I just heard one line. Don't y'all start doing that. You won't get through the preaching if you start doing that. I was listening to the music ministry while they were saying, I shall wear a crown when it's all over. We've been blessed by this so many years. But while I was sitting right there, I heard God say this to tell everybody in this room and everybody that's listening right here. It's because that song talks about after we leave this earth and we go to heaven, right? Uh, but God said to tell everybody in here and see if I can get a real reaction and say this. Just before I die, I'm going to live. Yes. All right, y'all. All right, you missed it. I am I'm making up my mind. Can, can I let y'all know something and, and get about, because I don't want to go against what, what the country is saying and what popular demand is saying, but the truth is, the mask can't save you. If God wants you, oh, see, okay, y'all missed it. If, if, God, if, if death really wants you and God will let death have his way, the mask can't help. Now, it, it can be a deterrent, but the truth is, I wake up every day. I don't sleep in a mask. I wake up every day giving God praise because if it had not been for the Lord. Oh, my God. If it had not been for the Lord. If you have your Bibles, I've been watching y'all lives. I told Pastor Tucker, I said, man, I'm tired of dancing on Sunday mornings. I'm in the bed just trying to be supportive and watch the live, you know, and also I'm just getting up out the bed. Just doing, you know. <laughs> so... But I'm here with you all today. If you have your Bibles, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. Um, 
my, to my friend and my good brother, uh, Anthony McMillan. God bless you, man. Love you, bro. Yeah. 2 Corinthians chapter number 4, commencing at verse number 3. Mm. You've been so good in the middle of the pandemic. You've been so good fed me, kept me, kept a roof over my head. You've been Mm. Verse 3, chapter 4 says this, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For what we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. Look at verse number six. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Verse seven. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may, may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side yet not distress, we are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. I want to talk about what I've decided to call, I had to go through this. <clears throat> I had. Father, we thank you. We're so grateful to be standing in your presence, God. We do not do it lightly, but reverently and in the fear of you, God. We are so grateful that you've given us this opportunity. Now, God, use me as a willing vessel for the flow through of your spirit and your word. Open up the ears of your people that they may receive everything that's coming from you. Bread of heaven, feed us until we won't no more. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen, and thank God. With the few minutes that I have, I want to address a couple of issues um, that we face on a daily basis, and no, it's not the pandemic. Uh, if we were to be honest, uh, the pandemic was just something that was piled on top of what we were already facing. Uh, many of us, I've, I've learned in life that uh, if there's one thing that is not Pastor Tucker, a respecter of person, it is this thing called trouble. Uh, I've learned a lot about trouble. Uh, uh, trouble will bother people from the welfare to farewell. Nobody can escape this thing called trouble. Trouble will get in the car and ride with you and won't offer you gas money. Trouble will get in the car and ride with you and make you turn right when you should have turned left and make you ask yourself, where am I going? Trouble will keep you up all night long and if you're able to go to sleep, trouble will wake you up early in the morning. Trouble will sit down at the breakfast table and ask you to pass the sugar. I want to know, is there anybody here that's ever experienced trouble? And I know many times, Pastor Tucker, uh, I hear people uh, say things uh, like, well, if, if you're not in a storm, you're on your way out of a storm. And if you're not on your way out of a storm, you're on your way in or you're in the middle of a storm. But my question that I often ask is, when does it stop storming? I mean, because, come on, realistically, if every day you woke up and you never saw the sun for about 90 days, you would get kind of concerned that it's always storming. But the truth of the matter is, brothers and sisters, storms have a way of teaching us lessons that we cannot learn in the sunshine. The, uh, the Hawkins, Walter Hawkins wrote a song, says, be grateful. He said, God is, has not always promised me sunshine, but a little rain mixed with sunshine, uh, it will cause me to be grateful. 
So understand, where we are right now is not just necessarily in a place where it's storming all the time, but God is teaching us a lesson on how to deal with life as life comes. I don't know, me and Pastor Tucker were talking in the, in the, in the office. I don't know when this pandemic will lift. I don't know when the things will get better, uh, when and if things will get back to normal. But the truth of the matter is one thing that trouble has taught us to do, and that is to adapt to our present situation. Uh, let me tell you something. Just because it's, it's something that's going on right now don't mean I'm going to quit now. Hmm. T look over at somebody and tell them, don't quit now. It's not time to give up. Just give me a little more on the monitors. It's not time uh, to give up yet. It's not time to throw in the towel yet because you are still alive. If you can shout on three words, I'm still here. Uh, that's enough to give God praise about because in the middle of where you are, a crisis, uh, God told me to tell you it's not the middle of a mess, it's the middle of a miracle. God is about to turn some things so drastically around in your favor that you're going to look back and reminisce on where you came from, but you're going to have to shout and just say, he's been so good. Ah, uh, yeah, he's been good. He's been good to us, better to us. Uh, Grandma, you say, better to me than I could ever be to myself. But you got to know, brothers and sisters, that no one is exempt from going through. You're not the only one. The Bible says there's nothing new under the sun, under the S-U-N or the S-O-N. You're not the first one to be behind in your rent. You're not the first one to be behind in a car note. You're not the first one to let the insurance lapse. Now you got to renew it. Talk to me, somebody. Don't y'all fall asleep. You're not, you know, I often tell people, you know, back when I was really, really struggling, like, not like right now, but when I was really, really struggling, you know, I, I would leave the porch light on at night so when I get home, I would know if my, if my electric was still on or not. No, it wouldn't catch me by surprise by walking in flipping the switch. I'd know as soon as I pull up. Oh, some of y'all ain't never, ain't never struggled before. See, some of, some of y'all don't know what struggle is. Some of y'all have been, been good all your life. You always had money. But I know about struggle. My baloney has a first name. Talk to me, somebody. It's O-S-C-A-R. My baloney has a second name. It's M-A-Y-E. I love to eat it every day. And if you ask me why, I say you, some of y'all couldn't spell baloney before the commercial. But my baloney has a way. Oscar Mayer has a way with what? B-O-L-O-G-N-A. <laughs> but if you're really from the hood like me, uh, 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 Oscar Mayer was a delicacy. Our baloney came off the road. Y'all miss, I said our baloney came off the roll, you know, with the little red thing wrapped around it where you had to cut it yourself. And, and no matter how you tried to cut it, you could never cut it even. Always had a slink. Oh, y'all. But it was something about putting that baloney in that cast iron skillet. I can't get nobody to talk to me. I want a baloney sandwich right now. Put some cheese and some miracle whip on it right now. You know what? It was nothing like watching that bowl. Uh, come on. And, and don't burn it all away. I see, I see the cameraman over there. Don't burn it all away, but just let it burn around the edges. Make a couple of slits in it. And... Look at somebody say, you better remember where you came from. You know, it ain't always been this good. Hmm. Look what the Bible says. It's, here is our rescue. There, there are some things, brothers and sisters, that we had to go through. Because if we had not gone through what we went through, we wouldn't be where we are right now. Hmm. Jonah never knew that being thrown overboard, that a whale would save him. Come on, talk to me. He wasn't, he, he wasn't designed to survive in the water they threw him in, but God put him in something that was designed to help him survive. Oh, yeah. Uh, so so what is the, the Bible says in verse number three, but if our gospel be hid, y'all see it? But if our, if our gospel be hid, first of all, the gospel, the word of God is not designed to be hidden from you. The word of God is designed to be revealed. Uh, it's, it's, it's called in, 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 a, in a theology word, uh, theophany, which means God is always seen. Christ is seen. The gospel is never designed to be hid from you. You know, people say, well, I don't understand Revelation. No, it's not that you don't understand Revelation. You don't believe Revelation. Uh, it's not hard to understand that if you keep lying, there's this place for you in the lake of fire. <laughs> Come on, talk to me. It's not hard to understand that if you don't live right, you're going to hell. 
That's not hard to believe. You just don't want. All right, let me move on because somebody's not laughing no more. If the gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. In other words, if you cannot understand this, you must be lost. Because watch, and, and, it's, and it's, it's a continuum into verse number four. In whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. You see, my brothers and sisters, the only, I, I, I see the word blinded the minds. And I said, Lord, I know how my eyes can be blind, but how can my mind be blind? And God says, your mind is blind through unbelief. You see, when I believe God, Pastor Tucker, there's nothing that the devil can say or do to me to make me think that God's not going to keep his word. Let me say that one more time. God is not a man. Talk to me. That he should lie, neither the son of man, that he should repent. But if he said it, he'll bring it to pass. And if he spoke it, he'll make his word good. So if God cannot lie, there is nothing that he said to me that is a lie. But the enemy will try to make me believe uh, that what God told me is not going to come to pass. But can I find 10 people in here right now that know if God spoke it to you, you know it's going to happen. If God, if God made you a promise, you know it's going to happen. He says, but the God of this world has blinded the minds of him that believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Understand, brothers and sisters, every time you go through some things in your life, God is trying to find himself. Mm. Uh, you, 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 see, you see, the word of God is a mirror that shows us who and where we are. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. It illuminates where I am, but it also is a light unto my pathway and it shows me where I'm going. So the Bible says, uh, understand something, when I, when, I, when I begin to allow things to happen in your life, uh, I'm not doing it so I can find you, I'm trying to find myself. Let me go a little further. You, you, you see, when, 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 when God takes you through things, uh, uh, when, when, uh, let me go this direction when the gold is put into a kettle in order to be purified into a kettle and they heat up the fire and, and the gold releases the impurities that are inside uh, and, and so when the impurities begin to rise to the top the goldsmith he scrapes off the impurities but the, but the process is not done because impurities got a way of hiding in places that only more more heat uh, will cause them to be revealed hmm. uh, and, and, but, but the goldsmith knows uh, that the gold has been purified when he can now Look at the gold and not necessarily see the gold, uh, but he can see his own reflection. So understand what God is doing. God says, uh, when I look at you, I'm not trying to see your flaws, but I'm trying to heat up the fire because there's two parts of heating up. It's either going to purify or it's going to consume. And God says, I'm not trying to consume you. He says, I ain't got to put you in heat to consume you. I can, I can inhale and consume you, he says. Uh, but what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to find me. Uh, so I'm trying to purify you. Now, let me tell you how this confuses the enemy. Uh, because a lot of times when, the, when God is trying to purify us, purifying uh, and, and, and consuming has the same process. You see, when something is burning up, you don't know that if God is purifying it or if God is consuming it until the end. Oh, come on, talk to me, somebody. And at the end, you'll know. See, the devil is confused. He thinks God is punishing you when God is saying, no, baby, I'm getting you ready for the next level. I, I'm getting you ready for the next blessing. If I wanted to kill you, I'd have did it a long time ago. I, but the truth is, I'm just trying to get you ready for the thing that I promised you. And what I promised you uh, is an expected end. He said, I know the thoughts uh, that I think toward you. I, I know I know what I'm going to do for you. I just need you to last until the end. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got to last. You got to last. You got to last. The Bible says you got to endure to the end. Look what the Bible says. He says uh, he's looking for his reflection. He's looking for his image. But then it segue into verse number five. He said, because now for we preach not ourselves. Uh, let me tell you what that says to me right here and I hope tell y'all be able to catch it. Uh, you see when I begin to talk about how good God is I take no credit. Let me say it again. When I begin to talk about how good God is uh, I take no 
credit uh, because the truth of the matter is brothers and sisters where I am uh, had nothing to do with how good I've been now, uh, now I ought to get about five honest people to talk to me right through here where I am has nothing to do with how good I've been because the truth of the matter is I ain't been that good I need to find somebody can I get real down and dirty with somebody that understands yeah I'm saved and this is a dressed up version of me but there's a part of me that people don't know I need to find somebody to know that you, you've had a speckled past. You've had a checkered past. Matter of fact, some of our past is even checkered from last night. But the truth of the matter is when I walked into the house of God, I, I recognized that it was not me that gave myself another chance. Uh, when I woke up this morning, I said to myself, it's another day that the Lord has looked beyond my faults and saw my knees. Where can I get somebody to scream on this, on this scripture? It is of the Lord's mercies. Uh, that we are not consumed morning by morning. New mercies we see and I thank him because I don't preach myself. I don't take no credit. Pastor Tuck, I've had many young men, young preachers talking about, Pastor, I want your anointing. Pastor, I want to preach like you. And I said, be careful what you ask for because everything that you have comes with the price. I can't get nobody to talk to me. Everything that you have right now comes with the price. Some of y'all, y'all got it. Y'all finally got it right in the house you're in right now, but you don't want to talk about the four evictions. Come on, talk to me, somebody. You, you got the nice car right now, but you had to go through two repossessions. Can I get somebody to talk to me to understand that? And I'm talking about since you've been saved. Don't y'all get funny on me. Don't act like it's only in your past when you, before you knew God. Uh, there's a whole, of, a whole lot of us that play. Oh, yeah, that's that song. That's that song. Everybody yeah. plays the fool. Sometime, no exception to the rule. Listen, oh, I thought I was someplace else. It may be factual, may be cruel. Everybody in here have woke up one morning and said, I can't believe I did that last night. I need to find out. No, come on, be honest. I don't shout like I shout on Sunday morning just because he's been good. I shout some Sunday morning because he didn't whoop me for the stuff I did the night before. Can I get somebody to talk to me up in here that know you've been to hell and back before and not because God took you but you drove yourself but God came and got you. I done woke up a whole lot of mornings in my driveway. Don't remember how I got there. Come on, talk to me, somebody. One, one, one tire was up on the curve. One tire was in the grass. I can't see y'all, y'all. See, y'all y'all ain't never, see, uh, some of y'all act like you ain't never took a drink before, like you won't know what puff, puff, pass mean. Some of y'all tripping me out like y'all ain't never been through nothing before. But can I find five honest people that'll jump on your feet and say, Lord, it's been me before, but I thank you for your saving grace. Don't touch it till I tell you. I'm almost there. The Bible says. I don't preach myself. I don't take no credit for where I've been. No, I ain't been, I ain't been that good. That's why I understand people that are not patient with their pastors. I'm not saying that pastors shouldn't mess up. I'm not saying that pastors shouldn't be holy. But I'm confused by people that are not patient with their pastors but want their pastors to be patient with them. Uh, talk to me. I, oh, it's going to get a little, a, little, a little cloudy right through here. We might lose about 100 viewers when I make this, when I make this statement. Because the truth of the matter is, watch this, I have the same... Uh, you see, I can't, I, I can't use a perfect pastor. Let me tell y'all why I can't use a perfect pastor. Because if I find myself in hell, I need a pastor that know the way to come to get me out of it. Come on. Uh, <laughs> I, I need a pastor that's been through something that can help me in the time of trouble. When I get mixed up, messed up and all mixed up in my head, the pastor can say, well, man, look, I've been there. Let me tell you how I came out. I don't want no pastor looking at me talking about holy, holy, holy. I don't need that right now, pastor. How can I get rid of this weed habit, pastor? Come on, talk to me, somebody. Pastor, I drink a little bit too much. How can I? Pastor, I go to Hollywood. Oh, did I say that? I go to Hollywood a little bit. Pastor, how can I get out of this thing? I love her, but I love her too. I need to find somebody that understands I need somebody. Look at somebody and say, I ain't been that good all my life. Tell them I ain't been that good. And the truth of the matter is, for six people that's going to scream me, and some of y'all here, I, I, I was supporting y'all when y'all was singing, so somebody better jump on your feet and talk, tell me I know what I'm talking about right through here. The truth of the matter is, I got struggles right now. Come on, you know that, that special drawer. 
Come on, talk to me, somebody. Ain't nobody holy all the time. I sit there watching a movie with my girls and my wife a couple, couple years ago, you know, and a certain actor came on. And they were like, ooh, my Lord. What were y'all thinking about when y'all said, ooh, my Lord? All right, all right. I'm, I'm, I ain't been that good all my life. But when I do preach, I don't take no credit. But I preach Jesus. Come on, talk to me, somebody. When I testify to somebody, they say, why you stay so happy? Pastor, I got to testify because he's been better to me. Then I've been to myself. So I thank him. And his segue in the verse number six, watch this. It says, for God who commanded the light <clears throat> to shine out of darkness. He calls his Holy Ghost light. He called us darkness. He said he commanded the light to shine out of darkness. He has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. If I tell y'all in one sentence what that whole verse just said, can I get about five screamers? That verse just said, I don't have to look like what I go through. Yeah, just because I'm sick, I ain't got to look like it. Just because I'm broke, I ain't got to look like it. Just because I'm going through, I ain't got to look like it. I ain't got to walk around all down like I don't know where my next meal is going to come from. Because the truth is, somebody said, well, Pastor, I'm broke. Well, guess what? You've been broke before. And when you were broke before, didn't God put some money in your pocket? I'm confused by people that's always walking around like they don't have a friend in the world. But the truth is, Pastor, this is why I give God praise. Because black church folk are experts at looking like a million dollars and ain't got a dime in their pocket. We, you carry Louis, you carry Gucci, you carry, come on, talk to me somebody. You carry all this stuff and ain't got no money in it. We got the wallets, we got the pretty cars. But the truth is, for nine people, just tell your neighbor... I'm just faking it till I make it. That's all I'm doing. I'm just faking it till I make it. As a matter of fact, when I get my real money, I ain't got to change my look. When I get my real money, all I'm going to do is buy the better hair. Can I talk to somebody? When I get my real money, I'm going to shop at the real stores. It ain't going to say Uchi. It's going to really say Gucci. Can I get somebody that understands if I got to go through, I'm going to look good while doing it. I know ladies that get their hair done with their last money and tell a girl, look, I'll give you a tip next time. Come on, talk to me something. Men will get their cars washed and they ain't got hardly no gas in it, but they look good. It's shined up. People say, you want to go eat? Say, no, I ain't really that hungry. What you're really saying is I ain't got no money left to go. Uh, but how many of y'all know that as good as we look, God has been just that good to us? Oh, I plan on representing my God in the best way I can. Where my church at? I believe I'm going to represent my God in the best way I can and let the world know that I may be struggling, but I ain't got to look like it. Yes. And it's segue into verse 7. Look what he says. But, conjunction, junction. What's your function? Hooking up words. Phrases and clauses. But is a divine conjunction that tells you to look back on what you just read. But because what's about to come on this side of the butt is about to change. Can I get somebody to tell, you, tell your neighbor, live on the right side of the butt? <laughs> on the left side was bad news, but there's some good news that's coming. He says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. We got a treasure called the Holy Ghost. You know what? I had somebody to question my baptistry. Is that a word? He questioned my, me being Baptist. I'm like, you ain't Baptist. You Pentecostal, you know, because you believe in, in dancing and, and speaking in tongues. I said, well, how about I'm just an enhanced Baptist? Don't, don't get mad at me because I'm not satisfied right here. I'm open to whatever God wants to do for me. But I got some real words for somebody right here that understand what God's really trying to say. Let me tell you something. The Holy Ghost ain't no Baptist word. It's a saint's word. Because if you ain't got the Holy Ghost, you ain't going to survive. Now, we can, we can talk about how it should come out. Because the truth is, I got a problem with people that speak in tongues but can't speak to you in English. But the truth is, you got to have the Holy Ghost. He says, but we have this treasure 
in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. He says, uh, I said, Lord, why would you put something so powerful in something so weak? Why would you put something so unbreakable in something so breakable? And brothers and sisters, the answer wasn't even deep. He says, I put that which is unbreakable in the thing that's breakable so the thing that's breakable will become unbreakable. In other words, I may bend, but I ain't go break. Can I just tell you right now, that's why you're still here. At the time you want to take out a gun and shoot everybody, the unbreakable thing, talk to you. Talk to me, somebody. The time you want to cut somebody out, well, not as bad, but you know what I'm saying. It was something on the inside that kept on working. My daddy, my daddy came home one day with, with a box. I said, Daddy, what's that? He said, and he blew in this thing for about an hour, and it was a clown that stood about this tall. And I said, Daddy, what I do with it? He said, hit it. Boom, I hit it. It went all the way down the ground. This, see, this is before PlayStation and all that. You know, it came back up and it kept smiling at me. I hated that clown. I, I mean, I, because no matter what I did to it, it always went down, came back up, and kept smiling. One day, I, I, I knocked it out and I jumped on it and I beat it till I got tired. But when I got up off of it, it came. Can I tell y'all, some of y'all are just like that clown. Some of y'all are just like that clown. Some of y'all are just like that clown. No matter how they beat on you, no matter how they, they spit on you, how they mess with you, how they knock you down, you keep coming back. And you still got a smile on your face. <laughs> They're trying to figure out how can they be so happy still. Uh, after all, I've sent them through. Uh, uh, but I, can I find somebody right now? I'm going to find flat in a second. Uh, but can I find somebody that understands that where you are uh, is not the end of the story? Uh, because after all, all you've been through in your life. I'm almost there. I tell you when you still got a reason to give God glory. You still got a reason to give God praise. The Bible says that we have something on the inside that's working on the outside. And Pastor Tucker, I'm not still here because I've been so well in my life but I'm still here because God saw something in me that told him that if I keep on blessing him they'll finally get it right can I find somebody that know you've messed up in your life that know you've had some challenges in your life you had some things you had to face that you didn't understand why but the real thing to shout on is this after all I've been through I still got a reason to give God glory I still got a reason to give God praise because after all I've been through I still got a praise in my mouth when I didn't have no money I still had a hallelujah when I didn't have no food I still had a thank you Jesus is there anybody here that understand that God 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 is trying to do something special in your life because he could have let you die. He could have let you fail. He could have left you by the wayside. But I feel like David right now. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where I would be right now. Come on, find me, Anthony. That's right. Is there anybody here that understands that God's getting ready to turn it all around in your favor? God's getting ready to move like never before. But I had to go through what I went through so I would learn how to trust my God. Psalms 119 said it was good for me that I was afflicted that I might learn thy statue that I might learn thy word. David turned around and said thy word have I hid in 
my heart that I might not didn't say it was a guarantee but that I might not sin against him but the one thing that David knew how to do was go to God and say Lord I'm sorry created me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me wash me and I shall be clean but Lord whatever whatever you do don't take your spirit away from me why don't you find somebody that you look and look at and say neighbor I got good news for you right now say neighbor hang on in there just a little while longer come on give somebody your testimony I've been troubled on every side yet not distressed I've been confused but not in despair persecuted but not forsaken cast down but not destroyed I've been to hell and back on several tours but the good news is I'm back I made it through my heartaches I made it through my pain bills didn't take me out unemployment didn't take me out why don't you look at somebody and say oh neighbor come on look at somebody and say oh neighbor I got good news for you right now say neighbor first of three scriptures say neighbor many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord the Lord the Lord the Lord ah, the Lord delivers them out of them all find somebody else that you can look at and say neighbor I got another scripture just for you say neighbor when I felt like giving up I heard David say yay though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for thou art with me I heard the songwriter said he walks with me he talks with me he tells one more person uh, that you can talk to uh, look at him in the face uh, and say neighbor uh, I found out uh, why I'm still here uh, no weapon come on tell somebody no weapon no weapon formed against me uh, shall prosper uh, good evening Gotta go try stone. If you never hear me no more, always remember that he told you, hang on in there, your change is coming. Hang on in there, normal days are coming. Hang on in there, your money's coming. Hang on in there, good health is coming. Hang on in there, family go be okay. Hang on in there. Ah! Do you mind if I hold your hand? Do you mind if I hold your hand? Take somebody by the hand. I know y'all don't like to touch, but I'm touching. Look at the name in the face and say, neighbor, do me a favor. If you see the devil this week, let him know for me everything. He tried on me, did not work. Say, neighbor, do me a favor. If you see the devil this week, let him know for me. He meant it for evil, but God turned it around. 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 God. Turn it around and everything.
every time I turn around, he keeps on blessing me. Every time, why y'all not turning? I turn around, he keeps on opening doors for me, paying bills for me. Ah, ain't he all right? Ah, God bless you. I had to go through this. I had to have pain at night. The songwriter says, trouble in my way. I had to cry sometimes. Trouble in my way. I had to sigh sometimes. I lay awake at night. But that's all right. I know Jesus. Ah, I know Jesus. Oh, I know Jesus. Jesus will. Y'all started something. Jesus will. Jesus will. Ah, Jesus will. But what if I told you this? How would you shout? It's already done. He ain't gonna do it. It's already done. You need to shout like it. It's already done. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Give God glory and praise. Give God glory and praise. To, to God be the glory for the things that He's already done. Take me to F Anthony, if you don't mind. I want to encourage somebody as you go through this week. If everything is all right, I'm not talking to you. But if you're going through some stuff, talk to you and let you understand that things are just about to get better. You got a change coming and everything's going to be all right. When you take off the Sunday face, I heard you earlier this, when you take off the Sunday face, you got to know that on Monday, the stuff you got to face will change your face. But you got to believe that the face I had on Sunday will carry me all week. Did you hear what I said? The face that you carry on Sunday will take you through all week. Never let the devil see you sweat. This is for somebody. I wish uh, Bishop Ross was here right now. I tell him like this. I've had some good days. Thank you, Jesus. I, I've had some hills to climb. <laughs> Pastor Tucker, I've had some weary days. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> and lonely nights. But whenever I look around, And I think things over, over and over and over and over and over and over, all of my good days. I'm talking to myself and about six other people. They outweigh my bad days. So I, I won't complain. Listen, I know not you. But sometimes my clouds hang low. I can hardly see the road. I ask the question, Lord. Why so much pain? But Pastor Tucker, I found out. He knows what's best for me. Although my weary 
eyes cannot see. So I'll just say, thank you, Lord. Can you lift your hands right there, everybody? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I won't complain. God has been good to me. He's been so good to me. More than this world could ever be. He's been so good, so good, so good to me, to me. He dries all of my tears away, turns my dark nights into day. So I'll just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I won't, I won't complain. God, God's been good to me. He's been so good to me. Come on. More than this world could ever be. He's been so good, so good. Somebody lift your hands and say, so good, so good, so good, so good to me, to me. He drives all of my tears away. Oh, yes, he does. Oh, yes, he does. Turns my dark nights. He turns them into day. So instead of complaining, I go down on my knees, lift my hands up, and say, thank you, Lord. I got more bills than money. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Doctor report is not good. But thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I won't. I won't. I won't. complain. I hear God saying right now, forget about preliminaries. Forget about protocol. If you want God to do something for you, you better let him know how bad you want it. I dare you to lift your hands right now and say, God, this is how bad I want it. If my praise had to show you, I'd scream right now. If my praise had to show you, I'd dance right now. If my praise had to show you, I'd open my mouth and give God pride. Come on, open your mouth right now. Get on your feet right now and praise. Praise.
거예요. 네, if you can tell somebody that you know that you had to go through it, but you can testify that he brought you through it. This is a good time to let the Lord know how appreciative you are for never leaving you nor forsaking you. Somebody that's out there, you may have been trying to figure out why the heat was so high in your life. Well, the preacher told us God's is trying to bring the best out of you. He's not trying to kill you. He's just trying to promote you. Talk to somebody and tell them I made it and I'm grateful. Yeah, he said that like you mean it. Tell somebody I made it and I'm grateful. See, some of y'all still act like you ain't been through nothing. Talk to somebody and tell them I made it and I'm grateful. Now somebody give him a praise. If you truly have a thankful and grateful heart. Come on, somebody open up your mouth. Put your hands on it. Let your feet get happy. And just tell God thank you for bringing me from a mighty, a mighty long way. He's been just that good. He's been just that good. I've had some dark days. I could complain, but instead I'm gonna say thank you. Some weary days. I could complain, but instead I'm gonna say thank you. We got. 
He secured a future for me. That's why I got to praise him. I remember when I was broke. I remember when I was hungry. I remember when I was struggling. But look at me, look at me. help me give God praise for God's man, the preacher of the hour, Pastor Kendall Washington. Come on, somebody give God praise for this great man of God and that word and that reminder, that reminder that I had to go through this. But I certainly don't look like what I've been through. Maybe there's somebody here today. The Lord was speaking to you throughout the service. The Lord was ministering to you. Calling you by name. For you to trust him. For you to depend on him. We've come to that moment where you can answer the call. You can answer the question. If you're not saved today, we invite you to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't have a church home, we invite you to become part, not of a perfect church, but a growing church. We invite you to be a part of the kingdom. If you're in need of prayer, if you're in need of a church home, if you just want to be saved, Numbers on the screen, you can give us a call. We have prayer warriors and intercessors that are here to pray with you, walk you through these next steps. But we don't want you to allow the sun to go down or log off from this worship experience without accepting Christ for yourself, without finding and having a place to call home. We invite you to get to know the Lord Jesus in a personal way. We thank God once again for that word. I don't know about you, but I was blessed. Was anybody blessed today? Amen. Was anyone blessed today? I thank God for the music ministry of Tridstone and to our
praise team and to all those and she who led us in worship on today. We thank God for each and every one of you. Uh, we want to thank those that came out on yesterday uh, to register to vote if you had not done so, to request your absentee ballot as well as completing your census. I want to publicly thank Elder Larry Price and his team for all that they did. But tell somebody, we're not done yet. We're not done yet. We're not done yet. This was just the first go round. We'll be back out here this Saturday, the 19th, uh, between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. If you need to register to vote, if you need to uh, submit your request for an absentee ballot, if you need to complete your census, we are here to help you. We are here to assist you. And I believe there are about 35 cars uh, that came through on yesterday. And we thank God for every vehicle and every person that came to prepare themselves to be a part of the change that we so de desperately need. And we invite you to come and be with us here at Triad Stone 858 East on 3rd Avenue. Meet us here this Saturday if you need uh, to get that taken care of. Women, save the date. Looking forward to Women's Weekend. I wish I had some women that would get excited about what God's doing in your life. <laughs> Praying and praising during pandemic. We are asking that you will keep the dates in mind. Friday, September the 25th at 6 p.m. There will be a prayer and praise service, uh, which will be virtual. And then on Sunday, September 27th at 9.45 a.m., our women will be in charge. And we are excited about what God is doing uh, through our women's department. We thank God for Lady Tammy and for her team. And we're looking forward to a great time uh, on September the 27th. Uh, let's keep all of our announcements in mind. Let's continue to pray for each other, continue to look out for each other. Thank you for continuing to partner with us and trusting God with your money. And if you have not done so, we ask that you would trust God even now and, and give uh, through our website, through our mobile app or text to give. We want you to stay connected to the kingdom. And uh, I believe, and it says in his word, that if you can trust him uh, with your dime and your offering, that he'll rebuke the devourer from your door. And I don't know about you, but he brought us through some things because we trusted him while going through it. I just, I just said something. I said he brought us through because we trusted him while we were going through it. So we invite you uh, to continue to trust God during these pandemic times. We love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. May the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, abide, henceforth and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.